Hi, and welcome to the show, which we hope could help you decide what career path to follow. Now, every week we look at three different careers and provide you with some great helpful advice and tips along the way to help make that all-important career decision a little bit easier. In today's show, 16-year-old Thomas is thrown in the deep end when he samples a career in water reticulation. Identical twins Joy and Lydia know they would be well suited to a colourful job. We think we have just the opportunity for this dynamic duo. And 17 year old Sam had a taste of truck driving in an earlier episode and now he samples another kind of driving. But first up, let's check out how Thomas handles the unexpected. Hey, I'm Tom, I'm 16, I go to Middleton Grange School because I don't know much about the water industry itself, but I'm keen to find out and get out there and have a shot. That's exactly what you'll be doing, Thomas. Outdoors working to maintain one of the essential services that keeps this country running. And keeping you working will be Wayne Priest, who started out on the tools, but is now water and irrigation foreman at CityCare. An apprentice coming into the water industry, we would be looking for someone that's mechanically minded. I'm not too shy, I'm digging a hole. Hi Tom, G'day. I'm Wayne. What we do here at Underground Services, we maintain all the water supply in Christchurch. So this will be your first day. I've got some gear here for you. All right, thanks very uh, much. Safety boots, yep. orange vest to be worn at all time, and a hard hat to be worn when, when it's needed. All right. There are three main parts to the water industry. Water treatment, providing clean and safe water to drink. The treatment of wastewater, making sure it doesn't pollute the receiving environment. And reticulation, installing and maintaining the network of pipes, supplying the clean water and collecting the wastewater. Right, Tom, this is a um, training centre that um, we've set up here. Apprentices are given a dry run on the types of piping and equipment used in water reticulation before being sent on a job. The wee scenario we've got today for you is that the gasket's leaking at the bottom of the fire hydrant. So what we're going to do is take the fire hydrant off, replace the gasket. Yep. Okay. It's all yours, Tom. Water articulation is the renewal of the old infrastructure. She's off. New, new pipe work to new homes, new, new meters, new installations, new fire services for new apartment blocks. Anything to do with the, the, the infrastructure that's in place at the moment. Hello. Yeah, hi Neil, yeah. No, okay, Neil, yeah, I'll get the boys there straight away. Cheers, mate. Okay, Tom, we've yeah. had just had a, I've just had the call from Neil to say that there's a broken water main in Bowen Vale Ave. Okay. It's quite a major one. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to put you on with Denver and you guys are gonna have to go and take care of it, okay? Denver was the first pre-apprentice in New Zealand to complete a level three national certificate qualification in water and wastewater reticulation. He joined CityCare's pre-apprentice program in 2002 and he really clicked with underground services. The job is already underway as Denver and Thomas arrive. A cable locator makes sure no one digs through gas or electricity lines and the safety crew set up traffic control. Um, the goal of the reticulation is, uh, to, for us is to maintain a, a healthy supply of water at all times for the customers that we, uh, we service. Quite often we get uh, blower mains in the uh, road or footpath, usually it's um, AC pipe, asbestos concrete. Oh, yeah. it is. The use of a palm pilot, pilot keeps is, paperwork uh, to a minimum and allows job. Denver to keep in contact with the central water control room where Thomas can watch the entire network being monitored and managed. This is where we control the water pumps for the city, the reservoirs and the sewer system for the city. Every aspect of the water process can be monitored from here, including the 94 pump houses that are located all over the city and pump high quality water out of deep wells. A very team has to keep the show running under strict conditions. If we were to have to go to a broken water main in the road somewhere, we'd have a four hour window to have that shut down, right. repaired, back in service. If we failed in that four hour window, we then come into penalties in our contract. The fire hydrant valve closest to the burst main is open to empty the pipe. One common myth would be that we lean on a shovel all day, but that's completely wrong because generally if someone sees us leaning on a shovel it's because we've worked all night to get their water back on and the boys are that tired they have to lean on the shovel. With the old pipe exposed, Denver shows Thomas how to cut the pipe free. Now it's Thomas's turn. Saw before, Thomas. That's the one, brother. 
everyone goes to the tap and they'll turn it on and think there's going to be water there. Well, there's not. Sometimes, like obviously, we've got there's a, a water main may have blown in the street. We've had to turn the water off. It's not something we've planned. It just happens. Water mains don't break when it's a good time to break. They break whenever they feel like breaking. Okay, get it. Stick the first bit on on the blue pipe. See if you can move that white pipe over. Just a few hours after his practice on a dummy fire hydrant, Thomas is installing the coupler on a water main that runs down a street he used to live on. It's challenging. Your office window changes every day. One day you might be up on the uh, Port Hills working in a paddock, fixing a water main up there. The next day you may be in Cathedral Square and amongst all the traffic and all the people. It's a wide, varied, exciting career path for a young kid to take. The trench is refilled so that there's enough weight on the pipe to prevent it bending and bursting when the water pressure is turned back on. OK, Thomas, what we're going to do now is turn this valve on here just to get the water flowing yep. through the pipe. And we've got a fire hydrant set up at the end of the street and all the water will just flow out of there. So the skills that Thomas can obtain through working in the water industry can uh, take him all around New Zealand and, and a large part of the world as well. We're just uh, flushing out any dirty water in the line and in the air. Thomas was really good, I thought. He, he wasn't shy of the tools. He knew how to use a couple of crescents. He was good. I, I'd have him back here any day. Yeah. Oh, that was good. Yeah, got to um, have a go at it myself. I quite enjoyed it here, and it's certainly an opportunity for me in the future. A national certificate in water reticulation takes 18 months to complete, with just 12 days in the classroom. A workbook that details the jobs the student has done is used as a basis for assessment, so coursework is minimal. The Water Industry Training Organisation also offers courses in water treatment and wastewater treatment up to a diploma level. An apprentice starts out on $11.25 an hour and a serviceman can earn more than $50,000 with the opportunity to move through into management after that. What a very career path to follow, always something different every day, so well done Thomas, that was great. After the break, twins Joy and Lydia see whether their flair for interiors could lead them to a colourful future. This is Just The Job. Welcome back to Just The Job, where we look at a whole range of options to help you learn more about what you could be doing as a career. Now, do you think you have an eye for colour and style? Well, Joy and Lydia think they do, so let's see whether they can combine their talents into a job opportunity. My name's Joy. I'm Lydia, and we're, we're 16, 16, and we go to Middleton Grange School. I like to decorate like my room and stuff, making it look creative. And I also really love meeting people. I really um, like talking to just random people. <laughs> With an interest in design and a desire to meet new people, identical twins Joy and Lydia could conquer the world of retail flooring with the help of super salesman David Buckby. They'll be spending time learning the ins and outs of flooring retail. So what makes a good salesperson? A person who's quite adaptable, a person who's prepared to accept um, more radical ideas and also conventional ideas. When the person comes through the door, they could be green with antenna. Good morning. They're a customer. Hi, I'm David. Joy. Joy. I'm Lydia. Lydia. I'm going to be your mentor yep. while you discover the world of interior design. I'm Joy. Yeah. Um, to tell us apart, I've got the... The cross? cross. Yeah. Well, let's go in and show you the tools that make this industry really fun, eh? Come on through. The first thing That's David gets the start. girls to do is so start like developing their product Let's knowledge. A quick look around the ranges here. See the things that you like personally that take your fancy. Sales staff need to know the range of products as well as the technical details to help their customers make a decision. They've got to know it. And when the customer asks that question, they haven't got an hour to go find it. The customer's too busy. Oh, we like purples. Yeah. Instead of a background colour like the carpet it's sitting on, we've got a definite colour. So product knowledge is important. Without it, nothing happens. All that's going to happen is disaster after disaster after disaster. I like the colour and I really like the texture of this one and I like the look of that one. Okay. Yeah. This carpet is nylon. Oh, yeah. It's a synthetic, okay? And this one is wool. And if I lived in, worked in this industry for a thousand years, there'd always be a challenge of a new product coming to me all the time, all the time. And what we've got here is a bit of maple. It's a whirlwind tour of carpet, timber and vinyl for Joy and Lydia. Well, retail flooring is an understanding of the mediums that you've got to work with and how, how they are applied to the home and how they are applied to the customer's life. It's just about great ambience and a well-being in the home. They have to get to grips with the choices they will have yeah. to help Especially them with the, the next big job. Right, we're going to go see a real property. One that's under construction, one that we're actually involved in. And when you come back, you're going to do a colour scheme for this house. So let's see what you can do, OK? 
A key part of retail flooring is measuring the site to check it is accurate and ready for the install. This is where we quantify or check that the plan we're working with is accurate. So you're going to check that, we're going to give you a tape measure, this is going to be one of your best friends, you're going to be using this a lot. A measurer, when it goes to a home, has to be more than just a, a tape measure thrower. Yes, now keep pressure on the tape, keep it down on the floor, watch the end doesn't pull away from the wall. His eyes are looking for things that may be um, a problem for us. If he gets it wrong, we all get it wrong. Okay. Part of the girls' challenge is to match their new flooring with an existing kitchen. Ready our girls, we've been out to the house. You've got a plan, you've taken some measurements. We've seen the kitchen, and there's the colours of the kitchen. Show me a colour scheme to go with that home. Hey yeah. guys, what do we got? Let's have a look. Let's say we start with Joy. What are we going to do for this house? I decided to go with a um, lighter type wood. Yeah. Then with the carpet, I quite liked that one because it kind of looked like the um, bench top. It does too. You know, a few more hours at this and you'll be taking my job. <laughs> that is pretty good. Lydia, what have you got for me? Right, well, I've decided to have this for the kitchen, the wooden floor, because it sort of like, it's the same as that. So this is good. I mean, they work together quite nicely. Once the product has been chosen, it's the quantity surveyor's job to come up with a quote for the client. OK, a QS is a quantity surveyor. Her job or his job is to work out how much product is required into the home. Now, obviously, waste is money in the bin. If they're very good, the amount of waste you're going to get is minimal. If they're bad, you're going to be able to carpet another room with it. And that's going to affect the salesperson because the cost of the job's going to go up. So the QS fits the product into the home with the least possible wastage. Joy and Lydia now have an understanding of product, measuring and quoting. So now it's time for them to watch a master salesman at work. Just watch, listen, learn a bit, and at the end of it, see whether maybe this is a possible career for you. The salesperson is the beginning and the end. If they get it right, we have a satisfied customer, we have a reward for the company, a reward for the salesperson. I think he'd just be like, showing them what he thinks is best for their family. If a salesperson gets it wrong, nothing happens. It stops at that point. And that, getting it wrong, could be 10 seconds or less after they greet the customer. So this whole wonderful thing, which is a sale, is developing around the trust and their admiration for both people. You can trust him because he knows what he's talking about. He doesn't stumble over his words. He just, he knows all the facts. It is the most exciting industry you can be in because it changes constantly. Nothing stays the same for long. The experience is over. So what does David think of Joy and Lydia's budding design talents? I was surprised to have two twins, one classic and one contemporary, <laughs> especially when you chose a product. Mm. You two would make a fantastic team. But it's been great. Thanks very much. Thank uh, you. You've been great, guys. Thanks very much. It's like definitely an option. It's like really interesting place to work in, and yeah. So considering it, looks like a good job to do. <laughs> a national certificate in flooring, installation, estimation, and evaluation includes measuring, quoting, design, and customer relations. The course costs eight hundred to thousand dollars and lasts two years. Training start at around $32,000 a year, and a qualified and experienced person can earn $100,000 plus. Well, after watching Joy and Lydia, could a career in retail flooring be something you could see yourself doing? If you could, then you can find out more about this career and all the careers featured on the shows on our website. So during the break, go grab a pen and paper because I'll be giving you those details at the end of the program. All right, when we come back, if it's mechanical and you can drive it, Sam's definitely interested. This is just my job. You're watching Just The Job, and if you're thinking about a career or maybe wanting to change careers, then stay tuned because this is the show that could spark a turning point when it comes to your work life. 17-year-old Sam enjoyed learning all about truck driving in an early episode, and now he's about to discover there's plenty to know when it comes to getting a forklift to do the right thing in the right place. Hi, good day. I'm uh, Sam Henry. Uh, I am 17 years of age and a student at Massey High School. Today I'm hoping uh, to get a just uh, inside of the training that's involved in becoming a truck driver.
Sam's already had a taste of truck driving, so today he's come to Decker, a driver training facility. He's going to get an idea of what training is all about and also how to drive a forklift truck. Mike Powers, Decker's training director. Decker stands for Driver Education Centre of Australia. We are a one-stop shop training provider. We cover anything and everything with wheels. Good How are you? Welcome to Decker's training. Hey. Sam's sitting in on a course for forklift driving. There's a whole raft of things that we do. Uh, example, all the category of uh, driver licensing. We should have to achieve things like raising the standards on our roads in particular. Um, increasing the individual trainee skills. Right, the aim of the course. At the end of this training session, I'll be able to send you out with the basic and simple knowledge of operating the forklift safely within your workplace. The classroom video graphically illustrates the dangers of this common workplace tool. Sam first learns the safety basics. Right, let's recap. What about climbing on? You know, you always hear people say, jump on the forklift, jump off the forklift. What do you think is the correct method? Uh, you have to make sure you have three points of contact on the, on the forklift. Well done, Sam. My God, you're a quick learner. <laughs> the theory over, time to get out in the yard. I, I expect it to be a, a bit challenging. I've never done it before, so, um, but, you know, I like a challenge. So. Now that you're seated and you're comfortable, obviously the steering wheel, one time making the assumption. Yep. And, of course, the steering wheel or steering column adjuster. And by that, we just pull it upwards. Yep. And if you've got a puku like mine, mm -hmm. we need to push it out of the way. With the basics learnt, a practice forward and back, the challenging part of the day can begin. And the whole object of this exercise is keeping as close as practicable to your turning points. Right, I'm pivoting the forklift, and you watch. Okay, as I go round, holding the same lock, right? People don't have to be licensed to operate a but the type of people we look for are those people who are going to consistently apply safe practices. Safety with forklift operations is paramount. Good man. Now look for a line to here, then a hard lock around, we're facing back in that direction. So Mike, um... You, you must have uh, quite a bit of driving experience to be a trainer. Actually, yes, I have. Actually, um, in fact, I'll show you my licence. That licence, mm. to me, is like a hammer to a carpenter. Quite impressive. <laughs> impressive? Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess there's something for you to aim to. Mm. Cool. Keep going. Oh, it's, it's definitely harder than I thought it would be. Um, on, I thought you'd just hop on and just drive it, but it's, you've got to be really conscious of the things around you and the safety. Well done, Sam. So, with forklift skills on board, Mike takes Sam to Hall's Trucking, a big refrigerated trucking company. Hey, Mike, you again. Good Rob Bates, driver Good trainer there, will take yeah. Sam out on a delivery run. This is what we're going to be loading up. So, what's inside these? Um, these have got um, fruit pulp inside them. I think they're around about 800 kilos each. It's going to put in some empty pallets, and then we'll load this stuff in. We'll put a shoring bar across, which holds the product in there, and then um, we're ready to go. With the fruit pulp on the road, there's time for a chat. We'll take current employees out and um, see what their skill set's like. Basically, it's like an in-cab assessment. We normally, I'd normally go out, I'd be sitting in the passenger seat, and I'd just observe, see what they actually do. Bad habits creep in, but I, I feel as though some of them drivers aren't actually aware of until they're pointed out. A trip like this has to include a classic truckies food stop. But for Sam, it's not a stop with classic truckers' food. Healthy stuff. A couple of bottles of water, mate. Yep. Drink plenty of fluids through the day when you you know when you're out on the road, you know. The hours can get quite long. Yep. Even though like older truck drivers will tell you to drink a lot of coffee, it's not actually that good for you. Um, through the day it loses its effect. Safer on the road, mate. Sweet. Keep those eyelids open. Sweet. <laughs> so with eyes wide, that fruit pops back on the road. Okay, Sam, we'll um, give you a shot at unloading the pallet. See what Decker Training's uh, taught you, mate. Sweet ass. Rip into it. Oh, <laughs> nice. Sam seems to have a, a very good attitude for a young fellow. He's, he's been asking questions all day, which is always a good, good sign that people are interested. Yes, Sam's had a good couple of days. In fact, I'm so impressed that, you know, with his learning aptitude, very quick on the uptake, that um, 
as the training director of uh, DECA training, I'm going to award him, uh, free of charge, a NOSH training course. Oh, Mike, Mike's great here. He's awesome. He's been really supportive and, yeah, a good instructor. I didn't even think about uh, how aware he had to be just of others' safety, but now yeah, I've had a good insight into, you know, what, what training uh, needs to be done to become a truck driver. You don't need a licence to drive a forklift, but if you drive it on a road, you'll need an F endorsement. To learn to drive a small truck, you must have had the full Class 1 category licence for two and a half years, and then apply for the Class 2 learner licence. There are national certificates available for a wide range of commercial transport driving. Courier driver, perishable products, livestock and loggings are just some. The job prospects for commercial drivers are good and the more licences you hold, the better your prospects and pay. So it looks like Sam now has a few options when it comes to choosing just the job for him. So thanks Sam, Thomas and of course Joy and Lydia for all being a part of today's programme. Today, there are literally thousands of career options available to you and sometimes making that choice can be really difficult. So we certainly hope our programs will help you to decide, but to make that decision even easier, we have the lovely Sarah from Career Services who has this week's tip for getting you that dream job. The people you work with can really make a difference to how you feel about a job. So what kind of people do you enjoy being around? Do you prefer someone who just gets on with the job or who takes time for a bit of a laugh as well? Would you like to work with a group that specialises and focuses on one thing, or people that move from idea to idea? Casual and part-time work can help you to figure out what works for you and give you experience in getting along with workmates. Nothing beats being in on a job to find out more about it and about yourself. Well, that's it for this week, but we are back again next week with another three careers and, of course, more helpful advice and tips. All the information about the careers featured this week and for more info about how to make that right career choice can be found by simply going to our program website, www.tvnz.co.nz, into the keywords, just the job. Happy hunting, and I'll see you next week. This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.